I'm for making sure we continue with fusion, we continue here. We're pouring our efforts into research across international lines, and I am confident, yes, that we can get there. Human beings created this problem, human beings can solve it. The climate crisis is a global one. Governments, think tanks and advocacy groups have now realized that it's not only an ecological disaster, but one that could have serious consequences for economic growth and development. The current debate between developed and developing nations dates back to the Industrial Revolution. Emerging economies now argue that richer nations have been able to develop because of their ability to use dirty energy. So why can't they? It's very sad that the, the least developed countries are the victims of climate change more than the ones that cause it. Environmental leapfrogging refers to the idea that industrializing or latecomer countries can bypass the dirty stages of economic growth through the use of modern technologies that use fewer resources or generate less pollution. If you look at poor countries in development, for instance, we would like to help them with serious money to simply jump the entire fossil age and go straight into the future. Why don't we you know, leapfrog and, and, and don't be locked into a, a fossil economy that rich countries are now eventually leaving. But there are mixed views on the effectiveness of leapfrogging. We seem to be bringing in newer and newer demands, particularly on emerging economies. Even those who have clearly shown that we didn't wait for global finances, we didn't wait for global technologies, we didn't wait for the world to come and tell us to set up uh, you know, varied uh, sources of renewable energy. And we are moving in that direction. I just think it's a fantastic opportunity to be clean from the start, <laughs> instead of having to go back and transition afterwards. We want to go green, we want to go clean, but it has to be done with our economic development plans. At the end of the day, you know, this vicious cycle of aid all the time is what the less developing countries want to avoid. Like, give us enough money to develop on our own. Leapfrogging isn't cheap. The African Group of Negotiators on Climate Change want $1.3 trillion a year. This is to help the continent make the green transition and protect their economies from the worst impacts of global warming. Funding and financing is critical, and we're hoping that this year takes that turn to have proper money and proper investment into a clean energy transition in line with Paris. At COP26, rich nations pledged to provide $8.5 billion to help South Africa reduce its dependence on coal. ESCOM, the country's state-owned power utility, welcomed this news. ESCOM will need between 30 and $35 billion to make this uh, energy transition a just one and also for us to invest in all the various component parts of our business to make the transition from coal to uh, a lower carbon footprint. But the important contribution is going to come from uh, governments and developmental financing institutions to help us with concessional lending so that we can accelerate this energy transition and decarbonize our economy faster. The announcement that was made um, to support South Africa, which is the largest pollutant in Africa, with 8.5 billion from the UK, France, the US, the EU, again, huge steps going forward. But would that be enough to help in the race towards net zero? You know, we're still living in a world where, you know, the gamers in California use the same amount of energy as the country of Senegal. 138 developing countries put language in the text yesterday. It got removed overnight. It's not there anymore. It's been replaced by an offer for a dialogue. That's all they want to do, a dialogue. It's disappointing? Absolutely disappointing and totally unacceptable. Does that make unacceptable. this whole agreement a failure? Sorry? Does this make this whole agreement a failure? As far as I'm concerned, it is a failure.